So Before Midnight is part of a trilogy, for those of you who don't know. Uh, the first one came out in the early 90s and it was called Before Sunrise. The next one came out 10 years after and that was called Before Sunset. And then this one is Before Midnight. And it follows a couple's relationship through all the different decades. And um, I should probably say what I thought about the first two before I talk about this one. Now the first one, Before Sunrise, I have to confess I have not seen it in its entirety. I know, I, I, I plan on seeing it soon, but what I have seen, which which is quite a bit, um, I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was, you know, a very quaint, charming, but really interesting look at first loves and relationships and that sort of thing. And then the second one I found to be even more complex because it was kind of a struggle between being in, in your, your own life and having your own life and coming across somebody that you first fell in love with again and having it complicate everything. And I just loved that movie when I first saw it uh, as a young teenager. And then this one, I think, I'll say it, you know, up front, I think this is the best one on my initial viewing of it because it's, you know, the characters are older and more experienced and they've had time to really build for good and for bad um, their relationship. And, um, you know, they've had they've had time to really build insecurities and build secrets between each other. And, you know, even though, uh, you know, it's been years and they know each other really well, you know, or they think they know each other really well, but in, in a lot of ways they don't. And that's the most fascinating thing to me about relationships. And that's what is at the heart of this movie, but I'll get to that later. Um, naturally, when it comes to love stories and things like that, I always prefer the ones that are, well, not always, but for the most part, I enjoy the ones that have to do with the older couples. Um, you know, like, even when it goes back to, like, Shakespeare, I would much rather read Anthony and Cleopatra than I would read Romeo and Juliet. I mean, I know Romeo and Juliet is the more famous one, but the, the Anthony and Cleopatra, the dynamic... The, the dynamic uh, relationship between those two characters is infinitely more interesting because they're older and they're more interesting. And it's not just all this kind of lovey-dovey, first love, teenage thing. I, I don't know. I'm just kind of cynical about that. But this one it really gets to the heart of that. And what I like so much and admire so much in this film is that, yes, it is definitely a continuation of the last two films. You can see a lot of the similarities, but this one is the one that is most complex. It asks the most questions, not only about relationships, but about humanity in general. And it's not afraid to be messy and show flaws and show relationships in such a, I guess, a dark, almost um, cynical light, if you will. And um, you get to see the flaws of these characters more than you have in any of the other films. Um, you know, the film starts out, you've got the two characters kind of sort of fighting, you know, you get a lot of the charming um, banter between the two, but at the same time, there's like this, it's laced with this underlying sense of cynicism. And you just, you know that there's, there's a lot building between these characters that they haven't really talked out in a long time. And then you've got a great scene uh, between a bunch of families and, and you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. But I really enjoyed that because you got to see all these different questions being asked about, you know, generational or the progression of our generations, you know, from the old to in the to the young and how we feel so disconnected from society compared to maybe the previous generation and the ones before that. And so that was really interesting. And you just see all these kinds of different relationships and how they kind of have survived over the years or haven't survived. And even though some of the characters monologues in this dinner scene felt a little schematic to me, they were a little bit written, um, but that's a minor quip. I mean, for the most part, they were really great to listen to. They still ha came off as seeming very naturalistic, and I like that. But anyway, this all builds to a final, very dramatic sequence, the third act, which is, which takes place in a hotel room, and it's between Julie Delphi and Ethan Hawke. And a lot of things explode through here. You get to see them really kind of just sit there and lay out all of their insecurities, all their problems with one another and themselves. And you learn a lot. A lot is revealed about the characters and how flawed they are. You know, you've got Julie Delphi's character, Celine, who's just, she's very high strung and she has this kind of obsession with feminism because she considers herself a feminist. And any sort of miscalculation or miscommunication between she and Ethan's character she just completely uh, becomes defensive over it and gets very angry. 
And then, you know, you've got him. He's more, he's, he's more of a guy. He's more of the relaxed type. He's mellow. And he's the intellectual dreamy guy who, you know, he tends to use fantasy in his world of, you know, being a writer to kind of escape from all of this. He goes off by himself and, and writes and, and that sort of thing. And even in the movie, he kind of pretends like he's a different character to her character. And at times, you know, yes, sometimes it works on her and other times it doesn't. But you realize that's how he's getting through life. And that is how he goes from day to day is through escapism, like so many of us. And that to me was a very painful thing to listen to. With these characters, you aren't sure whether they're still in love. And this is a very difficult thing to really face in relationships, but it's very raw. You know, these characters ask questions like, you know, if we had met for the first time today rather than 20 years ago, or sorry, well, 18 years ago, whatever, would we fall in, or would we still fall in love with each other today? And any, you ask any couple, I don't care, married or not, who has been with, been together through a lot, you ask them that question, it's a, it's an iffy one to kind of tiptoe around. A lot of us tiptoe around those questions. Um, but that is what's so great about this movie is that it is able to be messy and, and it shows flaws and it shows the rawness of relationships. And some people might find these characters maybe annoying, more annoying than they thought they were in other films or the other two films. But that's because this is not trying to be like a romantic comedy or something that's very romanticized like you usually see from Hollywood. This is a portrait of a real relationship. And so when you see these characters being very uh, flawed, you know, as I said before, it that's just like all of us. And that's kind of the point they're trying to make. And I almost compare this film and the other two, and this may sound a little bit weird, but I can I compare it to Italian neorealism in a lot of ways because it's so fluid in terms of how real it is. And um, this portrait of reality and the characters, they don't seem like characters. They seem like real people. The camera is completely fluid and you know unobtrusive and throughout the film. And you know these characters, the reason I think they set themselves apart from so many other famous romantic couples through cinema is that these, they're not trying to wink at the audience. It's not Katherine Hepburn and Cary Grant trying to do the banter for the audience. These characters are not interested in the audience. They're interested in themselves and each other. And that you just don't see very often. And I admire this series so much because they've kept the the consistency so well and to me they've just gotten better and better and better and how often do you see that nowadays especially in trilogies rarely ever so I recommend this film to everyone um it's probably I mean I haven't seen that many films uh this year and I'd have to look back and look at the ones that I have seen but right now this is probably by far my favorite film of the year I enjoyed it so much it was really powerful and I found myself thinking about it for a long time after I saw it so please go see this film and thank you all for listening. You can uh, comment if you'd like, tell me what you think about the movie. And also you can follow me on Twitter. The link is below. And I'll catch you next time.